as uh, Carson already told you who I am. So I, I'm going to switch the topic a little bit and focus on the virus purification. So we know, like, even though I'm not doing the virus every day, but uh, I heard a lot of stories from uh, our customers how challenging it is to purify virus. Because we know this is a important class of uh, bio biologics, that these days we use virus as vaccines for disease prevention, and also lately, uh, we, uh, if we pay attention to the news, like uh, we have success in gene therapy, that the viral vectors are used for delivery of the genetic material into targeted cells for treatment of uh, cancers. So uh, today I'm going to focus on the purification of virus. So uh, first I'm, talking, uh, I'm going to talk about the challenges we commonly see uh, in virus purification. And as a recent developer, how we adjust those challenges by designing uh, uh, the good chromatography media for you. And then as all chromatography, we always need to work on the method development because every molecule is different. We need to find the chromatography condition to have effective binding and also the effective recovery of the target molecules after we remove the impurities. In the two cases I chose to present here, as one is the recombinant uh, retrovirus, another one is the endovirus, because those two types of virus are actually, they account for more than 50% of the viral vectors used today for gene therapy, for cell therapy. And uh, you see some common features and also their unique properties and how we handle them during purification. So uh, we all know that virus are complicated. Because when we do protein purification, we look at the DNA sequence and trying to come up with the polypeptide sequence. And now I know the PI, I know where I can do binding and elution. But viruses, you are actually dealing with nucleic acids. And of course, we know there's a lot of uh, 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 other things associated with the genetic, genetic materials. For example, you have different kinds of viruses. They may have the capsids, they have the envelope or without envelope. And on the surface of the virus particles, we have thousands of proteins presented. They may have similar sequences. They have different kinds of glycosylation patterns that even if we know the sequences, we may not know the charges, the overall charge properties on a virus uh, surface, so we cannot predict where, uh, what condition the viral particles are going to be bound. And uh, the contaminants, because uh, during the cell culture process, the, some of the virus particles, the virus may die, as well as the whole cell proteins. The, this, uh, the, the breeds released from the virus, from the whole cells, actually, we are uh, dealing with a lot more protein and nucleic acid species and on top of that, of course, we have the, the medium components that also is rich in everything. So how do we achieve the selectivity? That's a big question for virus purification. And we know that you have to package the virus in order to have an active material. So if the purification conditions is not ideal for a particular virus, we may lose the structural or genetic components of the virus and end up uh, recovering uh, virus that are not effective uh, for a uh, transfection. In, uh, in the old days when I was still in uh, graduate school, uh, the, uh, the tools we usually use is centrifugation, outro centrifugation, uh, filtration to play with the different sizes of virus versus the contaminants. But we all know this kind of methods are not efficient. It takes uh, forever and you cannot really scale up uh, with the productivity. And lately, we have seen the use of membranes for virus purification, and it's a great improvement in terms of productivity. Because basically, when we start with a huge volume, you can use a membrane to capture the particles and do elution. At least we have the concentration a lot more improved. But on the other hand, as we know that we, when we use membrane for purification, it's mostly bind and elute. So if you have to resolve some of the uh, related species, molecules that are very similar in terms of their charge properties, you cannot do fine resolution on membrane. So I will show you how we use the chromatography approach to achieve this with the cases. 
So here is, uh, I'm going to use a uh, new VAQ that uh, one of the high capacity resin we designed to show you how we uh, mitigate this problem by properly choose the architecture of a resin to adjust the problem of virus purification. Because we know viruses are huge. So most of the chromatography medium, the pores may not be big enough for virus to penetrate, to diffuse into the pores, get bound, and you do the washing and elution to achieve purification. So the most uh, commonly used up to this point of chromatography uh, techno technology is the SEC, because we play uh, with the size difference that hopefully all the virus particles won't enter the pores and the impurities will get into the pores, get bound and eliminated. But the problem of SEC, we know that it's very slow. It takes forever. So your, your productivity, the throughput of a purification, it uh, will be hard to improve when you have to deal with large volume. So for resins, the first thing we need to fix is uh, like we need to enhance the diffusion, the mass transfer efficiency. So in order to do that, we create larger pores. So now like when the, when the pore uh, opening is larger, so hopefully the virus particle uh, will be able to have more chances to get into the pores. And we also create surface area because for binding, we need to have the interaction between the target molecules with the uh, functionality on the resin. And we know this, uh, the binding, the surface interaction is two-dimensional. In order to further improve the binding capacity, we're trying to immobilize uh, polymers in, inside the pores. Not just the beads are polymeric beads, but we also want to uh, increase the binding capacity by incorporation of polymers on the internal. Uh, do I have the point? Okay. The, for the internal, uh, inside the pores, we want to have the polymer so we can present the charges inside like a 3D, like you have another layer of binding functionality in addition to the, like the green, uh, the charges I have uh, on the surface uh, inside the pores. We also have the charges presented in, in the internal spaces. So now you have like, like extra hands uh, in, into the pores to grab the, uh, the uh, virus. And by doing the further optimization, like we can actually change the, poly the length of the polymer and also how much, like uh, the density of the polymer and the charge density on these polymers to further to fine tune the binding capacity and sel selectivity of the resin. And since we are creating so many pores, are we, we still need to have a resin that's strong because in order to maintain the high productivity, the beads have to be strong and you can still run fast flow rate to, uh, to have more virus produced. So uh, also the other thing we try to uh, increase, further increase the performance of the resins like we have more connected uh, pores. So we will further create a surface and you can see uh, actually Professor Carter helped us to uh, take this uh, TEM image of the new VAQ. As you can see, mm -mm. sorry. As you can see here, that the, this is one mic micrometer. So the pores are really open and they're well connected. And you see uh, the space connected inside the beads so that we use this to enhance the intraparticle diffusion to further enhance the binding of virus. So now I want to uh, talk a little bit about method development. As I said from the beginning, that selectivity a lot of time is achieved through like the method development. Because we know for IEX a lot of time, like we learn from school, in order to do binding, you need to have low conductivity. So all the charged molecules are bound by resins. But for virus purification, because the virus particles are much bigger than the smaller molecules, so in terms of diffusion, you will see if you do low conductivity binding, most of the 
uh, small molecules, we get in the pores first, it gets bound. And uh, a few, like a fiber particles, probably will hang around on the outer surface of a bead. And this is probably the reason that a lot of people don't like to use the column because it doesn't give you the binding capacity you want. For uh, new VQ, actually, because we have the surface extender, so we can take advantage of the pore size and also the charges are inside the cavity of the pores. And also, uh, Car Professor Carter and a lot of uh, uh, academic researchers have demonstrated, actually, the conductivity of can enhance the binding of some large molecules. Although we, are not uh, we haven't uh, fully understood the mechanism why the large molecules are favored, probably because of the presence of the salts, like there's conformational change of the polymer that uh, can uh, sort of uh, reduce the steric hinges for the large molecules to penetrate into the pores. And also as uh, like a, what, uh, one of the examples I just heard from Dr. Carter is like the dimer may be bound <laughs> or, or may be replacing the, the monomer inside the pore uh, during this uh, penetration process. So it could be true for the larger molecules because of the larger footprints, you may have more charges on the surface. When we have some salt in the buffers, those, uh, the salt may knock out the binding of the smaller molecules, and then the larger molecules can get in and displace them and get bound more efficiently. So hopefully this will work for the virus, and you are going to see uh, the cases uh, in the following slides. So uh, again, uh, we mentioned the method development, just playing with the pH and salt concentration. And here is a, a brief list of all the viruses we are using for gene transfer to states. And uh, uh, the two viruses we are going to talk about is the retrovirus and adenovirus. Besides their common feature as a huge a particle, they are actually quite different. One is the RNA virus, another one is the, the, the double-stranded DNA virus. They have different kind of outer structure in the genome size, and also because of the different integration uh, mechanism, you see they, are, they can be used for a different application in uh, gene therapy, cell therapy. And, uh, so here is a, a diagram of the, the retrovirus we are, uh, I'm going to talk about. It's big, it's 125 nanometer. And this is uh, a true gene therapy because uh, it's going to express by uh, uh, genetic manipulation, it's going to express uh, the tumor targeted motif on the surface of the virus. So it's going to find the, the tumor cells and then deliver the genetic payloads into the uh, uh, into the target cells, and hopefully, uh, this kind of uh, uh, surface antigens going to are going to recruit our immune system to attack the tumor cells. So you see that the real virus on the left hand side, and and then what's the, the structural or, or genetic components inside the virus. And uh, we are the goal for this process is like we actually want to include just one chromatography step. The, uh, NuviaQ is chosen because of the poor the design I just showed you. And also in preliminary study, we know that it can bind a lot of large molecules. This is the preliminary condition screening. So uh, we actually, we know that the virus is not stable uh, under acidic condition. So we have to maintain the pH at at least seven. And then for the initial screening, we're just fun to find out when uh, uh, under what condition the target molecules will be bound, and then how we recover uh, the virus particle. So you can see here, after the, the feed stream was loaded onto the column, a lot of uh, uh, biological molecules are in the flow through. So we need, in order to know where the target is, we have to do uh, biological assays to find out. So this is uh, a, a RT-PCR analysis of all the fractions. You can see like on the, the chromatogram here. So most of the viral particles are enriched during the elution. However, if we uh, try to do a mass balance, it's only 24% of the total virus got captured by the column under the current loading condition that only has 50 millimolar of sodium phosphate without salt at pH 7. In further analysis of the uh, LUH, we also found that 
uh, most of the impurities are, are eluded before the virus in, uh, uh, enriched fractions. And you see, like we did the RT-PCR, but you see the different uh, heights of the bars. That means some of the fractions, although you can detect the virus like by doing RT-PCR, but we are curious whether all the fractions have the equal biological activity that can infect the target cells. So by further uh, characterization of the, of the fractions, we actually found that uh, we can actually use the fractions to infect the target and then see, uh, use PCR again to check the integration, integration of the target uh, gene. So we found actually the first fractions, although we can detect the, uh, the virus gene's uh, DNA, but it was not that uh, active in terms of uh, infection. So mostly the, the second fraction during the, uh, the first uh, the gradient uh, is the active virus fraction. So by doing this, we actually, if you, after the loaded, uh, loaded fish stream, if you wash it with sodium, uh, 450 mo 40 millimolar sodium chloride, we were able to remove those uh, DNA pieces from virus but not uh, active virus, and then eventually get the, the most of the virus activity back in the second portion uh, of the elution that's around uh, 1,200 millimolar sodium chloride. So further improvement of this process was done by the inclusion of a nuclease digestion because we know when the cells die, the, the chromatins, the genomic DNA is released to the media, also will be bound by a Q because you have a lot of DNA interacting with the Q uh, charges on, uh, on the resin. So how, how are we going to eliminate them? So we've actually found that using the benzonase, we can chop down the genomic DNAs. So their binding are, is not that strong to the Q anymore. By washing the column with 440 molar uh, sodium chloride, actually you can further eliminate that portion, the DNA binding proteins in the DNA species in the early faction and then further enrich uh, the active viral particles in the later faction when uh, you elude the column with over one molar sodium chloride. The benefit for this slide, uh, instead of binding this pig and this pig, actually now we're dealing with a much smaller population of proteins. So you can use a smaller uh, Q column to do this uh, preparation. So with all those conditions incorporated, we can now actually do the equilibration. Instead of washing the column with salt, we actually do the binding in the presence of a high concentration of salt. So uh, we eliminate the majority of impurities from the culture, from the uh, genomic DNA portion, and then have the active uh, virus recover during a high salt, even higher salt concentration illusion that's at a, a 1,200 millimolar of sodium chloride. So here is an example, although a virus is not just a, a proteins, but we can use the idea we learned from uh, the uh, new VQs binding of uh, monoclonal antibodies, dimers, uh, or high uh, aggregates. And we believe that we, with the use of correct pH and high salt concentration, we can enhance the binding selectivity of Q, and we can actually uh, have good recovery of the viruses, like over 71% recovery, in it, uh, using a flow rate, 400 centimeter per hour. That's around like a 20 CV per hour. This is uh, uh, equivalent to most of the membrane operation these days. So you have the productivity of a membrane. On the other hand, we can use a column to fine tune the virus species, the active one versus those broken ones. So this is something that the membrane purification cannot uh, achieve. And then uh, we uh, start from a one mil column to a hundred uh, mil column and now to a five liter column. And we found that the purity and the recovery of the target virus is not compromised by doing the scale up. So the next case I'm going to talk about is a, a, adenovirus purification. Again, it's huge and it's complicated, and uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the structure, but uh, here it shows you that you can use, we, we use the SDS page to monitor the purification. And by looking at the uh, 
a few core uh, protein species on the surface of the virus, we, we uh, assess the purification performance of a chromatography step. And uh, the, briefly, that's the construction. Of, here is the construction of the virus in the culture condition, how we monitor the biological activity of the purified virus, and then uh, also follow the expression of the target proteins using biological assay. So this is slightly different in terms of cell growth. And uh, I, I believe that a older uh, cell culture uh, media system is used in, in, the, in this case. So you see here, this is the starting material. If you load this on a gel, basically what we are seeing actually is the, that's the fetal uh, bovine serum albumin that has a low PI. So if we use, a, for example, a Q column as a capture step, you will see the uh, majority of the binding sites are occupied by the serum albumin. So uh, you have to use a large column in order to capture the minor species. And also we know that uh, the adenovirus we are purifying actually at neutral pH is also negatively charged. So both of the uh, impurity and the uh, adenovirus will be bound by a cure resin, and with the majority of the sites occupied by the impurity, then we are not going to have a small column fast uh, step. Uh, so in order to, uh, to adjust this problem, actually we turn our attention to a hydrophobic cation exchanger. This is a mixed mole resin, Nilvia C prime. And if you look at the structure of the, of the ligand, we have the hydrophobic moiety, and we also have a carboxylates, whose charge state actually can be mod manipulated by your buffer pH. So namely, at lower pH, it appears more like a HIC, it's more hydrophobic. Once we increase the, the buffer pH, we are dealing, going to deal with uh, the CEX mode of the resin. So it's with many cases, we have seen its unique selectivity. Also, it has the common feature of uh, our new resins. It's like it has large pores that allow the binding of larger molecules. So a quick DOE would tell us how we uh, differentiate the target virus from the contaminant. Here, uh, we actually look into the effect of pH, buffer pH and the bind uh, binding buffer conductivity like sodium chloride concentration. By a quick DOE, we found actually the most important parameter is the, your feed's pH. At pH 6 and above, namely, we, we didn't really see much binding of the contaminant. And you can actually have quite high salt concentration in the feed and still have the target virus bound by the mixed mole resin. So that, that's a, a advantage. That means you don't have to dilute or do, do a diaphiltration to reduce the conductivity of the feet and still have the target effectively bound. And now, see, we dropped the pH to six. So uh, the target is virus is bound, but the uh, serum albumin is in the flow through. If you look at the gel, the starting material, we only see the serum albumin, and this is the flow through from the Nuvia C prime. And uh, lane three is the Nuvia C prime alluate. We know it's, uh, it's not totally free of the serum, but we have uh, at least the majority of, removed, and we are still dealing with other impurities, and we don't really, still don't really see uh, the virus on protein bands on the gel. So that means we need another step. So this is the polishing purification on Nivea Q. Uh, again, we play with the binding uh, condition that I'm not going to go into the details. I just want to highlight the fine tuning of the condition here that this is the loaf of uh, purified from Nivea C prime, the alluate. So when we load this onto the, the Q, Nivea Q, we saw the, uh, there's additional impurities uh, appear in the flow through. In the wash with a 400 millimolar sodium chloride uh, buffer, we see uh, other bands uh, removed from the column. And then uh, if we elude the target at this point, we, now we see the four uh, five characteristic virus proteins, 
And there's another one that uh, we have to deal with. It's, uh, we suspect that's the whole self protein that's very similar to, uh, uh, to the virus, and it's co still co-eluded. However, by a simple um, increase of the salt concentration, again, 440 millimolar sodium chloride, we saw actually this impurity can be uh, eliminated during the wash of uh, 440 millimolar sodium chloride. And then uh, after that, we do elution, and it's now you see the clearly the bands from the virus. So here, uh, this is the... Uh, incorporation of all the conditions, we, uh, we did a higher uh, stringency wash and we get the target mo uh, virus eluded. And um, now uh, it can be further with this since we know we can remove the additional impurity from the 440 millimolar wash. We actually load the nuvia CPI aluate without change of salt anymore because new C5, if you still remember, it's eluded at, four, at 500 millimolar sodium chloride. So it's a simple pH adjustment. We can put this on Q and then uh, recoup the, the target virus in lane six. So this, uh, you saw this before, so I'm not going to repeat. And here shows you the uh, overall the recovery of the virus that's over 50% after two co uh, columns, and then the impurity level is very uh, comparable to the to material required for clinical studies. So you see here, uh, I show you two examples that we use NuvaQ as the chromatography resin, and this is an like example to show you how we build the architecture of a resin to overcome the mass transfer barrier, and also uh, how we can use the surface extender to facilitate the binding of large molecule and to recover, uh, to achieve selectivity and recovery of the target molecule by proper method development for chromatography, and it's quite simple. It's still pH and sodium chloride. You can achieve uh, all, all the requirement you need for the purification. As we know that with these days, we need a lot of virus. In order to meet the requirement volume, we have to have passes that are uh, offering the productivity and also has to be generic enough because you don't want to have like an affinity, for example, approach for every virus you're trying to purify. The cost will be high and it will take a uh, long time to develop a affinity ligand. On the other hand, I show you for NuvaQ, for just two uh, different kind of virus, you can use similar chromatography strategy to achieve purification. It's either in one column process or two column process, you can generate a material that has a good uh, colorance of impurities and the passes are readily uh, scalable. And I would like to do I still have time? Just to thank my colleagues at BioRed, especially to uh, our former R&D manager, uh, Russ Faust, who uh, offered a leadership in the past 40 years, I think, at least 40 years, uh, guiding us in the past uh, resin development. And my colleague, uh, Jali Liao, he's a genius. Usually when we talk about a, a product concept, he can come up with a prototype resin in just two or three shots. That's very close to the final products we want. It's very, he's very quick. And I want to thank uh, Professor Carter and his lab. He, uh, uh, they did excellent work to show us, really show us how uh, our resins work, to really see the resins as you saw one of the image, that whether we are creating the pores we want, whether the resins perform like, uh, like it offer us the diffusion efficiency like we desired. And then I want to thank Mark Fitchman at Asoma Tech. He, uh, he actually, he's the one who went out of his norm, like the toolbox, and is willing to try our resins and really put the virus on our resins to show they do work for virus purification. And I'd like to thank you, your attention, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer.